The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Every single bite needed to be savored. <laughs> There's Twinkies in there. Wow. It's like a great big hug in the cold city. I mean, that food is about as spicy as I can handle, and okay. my parents put chili powder in my baby food. Like. <laughs> And I sent french fry bits everywhere all over the table and just a lot of chewing and... <laughs> okay, my stomach is growling right now. I just want you to know I'm hungry. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by the members of KQED and by... Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. IRG, with thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG Brisbane, Dublin, or online at marblecompany.com. Locally owned and operated for 24 years, Amici's East Coast Pizzeria serves up a taste of the Northeast's distinctive Italian fare at their 12 Bay Area locations. Open daily for a quick business lunch or an evening meal out with family and friends, Amici's offers homemade pastas, fresh salads, and pizzas cooked in traditional brick ovens with many vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options. Menu and locations can be found at amichis.com. Amichis, proud to support KQED. Gotcha. Hi, I'm Leslie Sirocco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, real estate manager Ray Scarabasio has dined in properties around town, around the U.S., and around Italy. He's ready and willing to stake his claim and recommends his spot, and he does it without reservation. And market researcher Suzanne Henriksen follows a line of investigation to find the perfect combination of flavors. She'll explore any lead that examines good food and great dining. But first, Nanny Dorothy Adams, or Dot for short, takes care of more than just children. She began a cup of sugar club to nurture her community of neighbors. Her sweet spot is the perfect place for a cuppa, a place to indulge herself and to feel like royalty. It's on Church at Clipper in San Francisco, and it's called Lovejoy's Tea Room. Hello, I'm Muna Nash from Lovejoy's Tea Room. I'm one of the owners and also one of the chefs here. My business partner and best friend, Gillian Briley, and I purchased it about 11 years ago when we moved it to this location. At first, we thought it'd be just a little part-time business for us, but from the minute we opened up the door, it has kept us busy and people seem to love it. We have a wonderful staff, many of whom have been with us almost as long as we've been in business. And a lot of them are artists. Megan, for example, is a textile artist, and Taylor is a singer. And they're all a very eclectic, wonderful group that is like family to us. We want it to feel unpretentious and welcoming. Uh, we do full tea service though, and we actually have people from all over the Bay Area as well as out, out of the country coming in and enjoying tea service. Fresh fruit, lemon curd with crumpets, petit fours. Um, but the main thing that you often will find on tea service is a good pot of tea, an excellent scone, and some little tea sandwiches. Now the tea may be regal in this place and you get, do get tea service, but it is pretty casual, isn't it? It's pretty casual, I'd say, definitely. You get casual from the owners and the wait staff, and, but you also have people who like to dress up fully and wear hats and pretty, pretty dresses. And, um, it's, and really take tea. And really take tea. Yeah. It's definitely about the ritual of taking tea, um, which is, to me, a really magical experience because it's kind of like taking a tub where you have to stop and take in, in your environment and the person That's you're right. with. And, That's right. Uh, so it's more about the tea. Uh, I mean, and what about, teas do you like to get when you go? And, and you can order teas, you know, the Queen's tea or various sorts of teas. Mm -hmm. what, which one do you like well, to I get? Well, I definitely love to do the Queen's tea because I usually go on special occasions and that's going full out and you have three tiers of fantastic 
tea foods. And you know, you start with your sandwiches and a little salad and, you and have a selection coleslaw. Of sandwiches that you can get. Totally, a, a wide selection. Right. Yeah. yeah, and they've got the traditional cucumber mm -hmm. and cream cheese, but it also comes with this fantastic coleslaw with a little bit of fennel and just the right amount of dressing, mm -hmm. and their organic. Um, Spring salad comes with this amazing dr uh, dressing, which is like a mustard dressing. Yeah. The dressing yeah. was amazing. Yeah. I felt like it, there was a little horseradish in it or yeah. something, and it was really the dressing on the salad. They was will very not nice. give you, you the have? recipe what for that. What did you have? You know, maybe we we went a little astray because we didn't do one of the typical teas. Um, we did the pub fair. We were, we were kind of mm -hmm. hungry, and so we had the quiche, with, which came with the salad and the delightful dressing, and then we also had a beef um, pasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The beef pasty was was okay. It was pretty good. The mm -hmm. filling was good. Yeah. Um, the crust and was well. And those are such well. a traditional English dish. Very yeah. traditional. Yeah. The quiche was a big disappointment for me. Mm -hmm. it, it was not light and airy as I expect when I go out to eat. Um, it was kind of dense and a little rubbery. It had a layer of like cheese on top. But, but you didn't have the actual teas. I mean, because you can do a selection of teas, and they're quite. I mean, they're quite filling. Yeah, I, I did the I mean, A big tea. guy like you can you can have a yeah, tea. Yeah, those right? sandwiches, <laughs> which I'm like begging for more. But I also uh, <laughs> went off the a la carte menu and I had the uh, sausage which was real nice, right. and then uh, the scones, which were... Oh, the scones, scones were amazing. I I and I they're not your aunt's yeah. dry no, scones. Right. No. The scones so were amazing. Yummy. And, and I mean, they're, they're soft and they're warm, oh, and you've got clotted cream. cream. The cream clotted is, cream. It's incredible. I mean, I put it on, it was... I, they bring Lemon you two. curd. Yeah. Hard pressed yeah. to finish one. Yeah. What? I mean, they're so filling. Yeah. yeah. They were fantastic. Yeah. And I've had my ba my fair share of bad scones. I think we all have, yeah. probably, yeah. right? Dry. And so I was a little like, especially since we weren't thrilled with the food, when she came over and said, right. we're famous for our scones, I was like, oh, I don't know. Said the same thing Thank gosh we tried that yes. because they were tender, moist Definitely. on the inside, sugary a little bit, and sweet and crispy on the outside. And you slather and that lemon curd on. Mm. And, you know, well, yeah. if Delicious. you've gotten the Queen's tea, it also comes with these warm, crispy crumpets towards we the end with the butter. It's just, I mean, if you're not so full yeah. by everything you've had on those three right. levels, right. by the time the crumpets come, oh my God, um, they're yeah. just delicious. They smell so good. So you're gonna have tea, I'm gonna tell you next time when you come back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we did get tempted with the little petty fours. So I don't know if they had petty mm -hmm. fours they when did. you were there. And mm -hmm. because it was my first time, mm -hmm. she yeah. comped me one, it was fantastic, yeah. Yeah. off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the owners, Muna and Jillian, oh. who mm -hmm. have a real background people. in, they're not yeah. English, but mm -hmm. uh, Muna has worked in she, Ireland. She's and, fabulous. Yeah. She knew yeah. She knew I was raw. Yeah. She took care. <laughs> she took care. Didn't know you're from Czech, please. But that is yeah. true. You're that just a true. handsome guy, and so she was taking care of Thank you, I'm you. sure. But it is. It's a yes. place where guys can go and, and have yeah. their fill as well yeah. as young kids. Yeah. Sort of yeah. Place. So. And it was funny because she asked, do you have a reservation? It was 2.30 on a Wednesday, and I'm like, who's going to be here? Right. And yet, right. it was packed. It's pretty busy, yeah. especially on the weekends. You mm -hmm. have to make a reservation mm -hmm. on the right. weekends. Right. And what about the, the service? Because the, the sort of mismatched mm -hmm. plates and cups. and It was uh, a slice of uh, British... Uh, I royalty, if you will. It definitely yeah. adds to the charm for me. The, the different cups don't match the saucer. It's eclectic. It mm -hmm. certainly is eclectic. Right. I did yeah. feel like I kind of stepped back 60 years or so mm -hmm. and had a little bit of a grandmotherly feel mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Lots of lace, lots of, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it was. It was charming. And yeah. you can stroll next door to their antique the shop. Right. And, mm -hmm. right, they have a little shop where you can get they do. right across the street. Right. Broken tea pieces. Absolutely. 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 Tea service. Mm -hmm. You want to do mosaics or something. Handmade sure. aprons. That's right. Mm -hmm. Tea cozies. The, the welcoming mat, if you look, is a, is a ceramic. Um, you know, the broken tea. Yes. Nice. Yes. yes. Nice. Right. But right. also, uh, we didn't really mention their their tea selection, mm -hmm. which is huge. And, and they've got some, like, uh, my favorite is their vanilla robus. Oh. It's so delicious. And so with you the can cream order and the sugar. A, and a real selection of teas. Mm -hmm. So this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Well, for me, it is about the tea ritual, spending time with great friends. Um, I've gone there for over a decade and I've always left very filled spiritually, mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. I love the place and I love the women who run it. Right. And Ray? I think it's a great place to go for a special event as you say. It's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> you stole Suzanne. my line. So. <laughs> you know, it, it's not quite what I look for when I go for a good time. Their scones were delicious and I've had my share of bad scones so I give them that um, but I probably wouldn't return. All right. Well, if you would like to try Lovejoy's Tea Room, it's on Church at Clipper in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-648-5895. It's open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person for lunch or tea is around $20.
Ray's favorite Mexican joint serves food from every region of a country in a place where atmosphere, art, and music make the dining experience sing. It's now expanded into another building on El Camino Real in San Bruno, and it's called Don Pico's Mexican Bistro and Cevicheria. My name is Isaac Mejia. I'm the owner and proprietor of Don Pico's Mexican Food Bistro and Cevicheria. We've been here 37 years. It was uh, started in 1975 by my parents. It's 95% family run. And we just moved into this beautiful room adjacent to the old Don Picos. You can't help but notice the magnificent 1925 Brunswick bar from the Cliff House with the original seating. And the restaurant is built from 95% recycled materials from other restaurants. The mural is from Roberto Leroy Smith, who studied under Diego Rivera. We try to introduce a lot of California ranch style cooking, which represents a lot of different cultures from California, from the agricultural days. Our dishes have almost 50% vegetables in them. Uh, we have seafood, meats, and we're one of the few Mexican restaurants that does all our own butchering. I try to put up five specials every day, so whenever you come any day of the week at Don Pico's, you're gonna find something new. Now, Ray, this is really a family-run place, isn't it? Correct, it is. Yeah, Isaac, the owner, and uh, his sisters and their their children, they all work there. The husbands, it's, it's uh, you can tell there's a lot of pride that they take in not only cooking, but also in the service that they provide. Um, he's very proud of what he has put into the establishment, both uh, from a culinary right. point of view and also from the environment you're in. Um, and what's his signature dish to you? When you go in uh, there a lot, what's his signature? I, myself... Love the uh, all meat paella, okay. but that's my soft spot for that. Also, the crab I don't know, enchiladas. You don't look like a meat eater. Yeah, to me, but, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not my much, but uh, that is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a couple of meat dishes as well. We mm -hmm. had the carnitas yucatan. Sure. And we also had the chili verde. And the yes. chili verde, the pork was so tender uh, yeah. and succulent. And while the, the sauce was mild, it was really flavorful. And so I really enjoyed that. Yeah, right. the chili rancheros is mm -hmm. one that kicks up a notch. And why is that? What is it? Well, he uh, as he, he came to our table, and it, which is great. He's very personable. And Isaac says, you know, we have 20 different sauces that we pull from. So not not any dish will ever be the same because we can say, hey, you want to kick it up a notch? Right. Here we go. Right. Well, speaking of kicking it up a notch, when we first arrived, we got the chips and salsa. Sure. And I couldn't do the salsa. It was uh -huh. way too yeah. hot. Uh -huh. And when I asked the waiter, he was, he was really funny, actually. He's like, I knew it would be too hot for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But then he, I said, can I get a, a milder version? And he was totally accommodating vocally, but mm -hmm. it never came. Ah. And it never came, and it never came. And meanwhile, my husband's like, Aah. So by the time the really great, excellent, mild salsa came, mm -hmm. I had no more chips. Sure. <laughs> so right. Understood. Understood. Like, mm -mm. And yeah. what about guacamole or other appetizers that yeah, you had? Yeah, guacamole yeah. kind of bland, but mm. actually, like, I love spicy food, and I sure. agree the salsa was a little too spicy for me, but mixing it in with that guacamole oh, yeah. was... Was delicious. It's good choice right there. Up and Correct. Out of it. Yeah. Correct. So, and the, their margaritas were honestly yeah. divine. Off the hook. Oh, I yeah. was totally disappointed in their margarita. Oh, really? I felt wow. like it was a mix. Really? And I was wow. like, and that really set the mood for me. Uh, I was like, bad. oh, so no, did you not it's have a, a good mix. time? Was this a. I mean, overall, the food was totally tasty. Sure. But the service was kind of inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. And, and when we admired the artwork on the walls, sure. no one could tell us who uh, was the artist. Uh, and that was like a little bit of a bummer too. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, so what did you have then other than the, um, other than well, the chips and the I had a very salsa. delicious um, ginger and pork apanada for mm -hmm. my um, appetizer. And did you really get the gingery character out of and it? And I, it was delish. It was mm -hmm. fried and that was unusual, mm -hmm. but I dug mm -hmm. it. And then um, for my dish, I got the um, crispy fish taco with oh, yeah. bacon. Mm -hmm. And yeah. forget it. If, if I hadn't eaten anything else, I could have ate that whole plate By and asked for more, but sure. it was so a huge plate. Yeah. Well, fish tacos, so then you add a little delicious. bacon. Everything is better with bacon. Totally. So and it was, it was not just any bacon, though, because, you know, you put bacon in a dish and it kind of gets steamy, so it gets limp. But right. this was crispy yes. right mm -hmm. on bacon. So right. I love my fish I have to tacos. say, with the so, I mean, desserts. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was so excited to try the flan. My husband is oh. a huge flan fan. They have five or six mm -hmm. flans on the mm -hmm. menu. It was a Wednesday night at like 
30, 6 o'clock, they were out of all flan. Yeah. Already, yeah. They were out of flan like, for me, too. How were you out of flan on a Not Wednesday a flan. night? We like, did the beignets and they were, or oh. beignets, and they were off the hook. I mean, they were just... A traditional really, Mexican dish, it was, Yeah, <laughs> by the way. But it was unbelievable <laughs> of a finish yeah, for right. us. But uh, Now, know. why is that? Were they airy and fluffy Yeah, they, they make their own... You know, they, as, as uh, our waiter told us, they had just gotten their dough back and they mm -hmm. make their own dough and with the homemade uh, whipped cream and with the cinnamon on top, it was... Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was it was a fantastic finish, and right. fortunately, it's not our first time there. So, hence, we were. You know, I, I've I've tried, as you can probably tell, I've tried many of their dishes, <laughs> and uh, never and I want to go back to those margaritas because yeah. you two liked them and you did not, yeah. and you thought it was bland and. and well, sort I thought of it mixed, was a mix, and uh -huh. that. See, I, uh -huh. I didn't think it was a mix because it wasn't too sweet for yes. me, and it wasn't too acidic for me, and I often yeah. find mixes are one yeah, of those sweet two. And sour. Too much. Up. Um, yeah. So it was good. I thought it was a little expensive for the size of the margarita. Mm -hmm. I would have liked the bigger one. You just have to order more. Have to have multiple ones. And what about parking in that area? They have a little they parking spot little that has yeah. about eight, and then uh, you know, usually right there or across the street on El Camino, yeah. you can find right. it. Wasn't a problem. So too, yeah. And it was bad. actually really easy to get from San Francisco sure, to San Francisco. Sure, it is. It's it's it's, it's, it is easy. convenient. Yeah. But they Definitely. do call themselves a cevicheria, and I right. didn't see ceviche anywhere on their menu. And when I asked the waiter about that, he said, "Oh, we don't put it on the menu. You have to ask for it, and we can tell you what there is the <laughs> day." That can be difficult. But I, I was disappointed because we love ceviche, yeah. and we probably sure. would have ordered it if we saw it on the menu. Well, that's a trick that people need to know now. All right, Ray, this is your restaurant, so give us a quick summary. I would say that it's a wonderful Mexican restaurant in San Bruno. Huge menu. Uh, he's a big supporter of the community and if you are there when he is cooking, he is more than happy to come out to the table and say hello. everything they need. Say and hello. what about you, Doc? Well, I feel like because I'm spoiled by living so close to the sure. mission that I wouldn't head out to San Bruno again, right. especially since the service was a little inconsistent for you. And Suzanne? I thought it was solid Mexican food. I thought it was good. Um, I agree. I think since we live so close to great Mexican food, sure. I can get it a little bit cheaper and a little bit more conveniently here. All right, if Understood. you would like to try Don Pico's Mexican Bistro and Cevicheria, it's on El Camino Real in San Bruno. The telephone number is 650-589-1163. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $25. As a wine expert, I taste thousands of bottles every year, and you can taste like a pro too with my four S's of wine tasting. See, swirl, smell, and sip. The first is to take a look at the wine, see. You can tell a lot about the wine, maybe it's grape variety, the way it was made, even its age. For example, white wines will get a little darker over time and red wines will actually get lighter. The next step is swirl. Coat the sides of the glass and release all those aromas. Then you want to smell the wine, the most important part of wine tasting. Put your nose in the glass and just let your mind go wild. Does it smell like spices or flowers? There's no wrong answer. And finally, sip the wine, the final S. Is it full bodied, is it light bodied, dry or sweet? And most importantly, do you like it? If you can't decide, then you need another sip. Cheers. Suzanne's favorite spot is so good, she's even willing to take some critical friends there. That's always risky, but she has confidence in her Middle Eastern dining destination. Yemeni food with a California twist. It's inside the Hotel Carlton on Sutter between Hyde and Larkin in San Francisco, and it's called Saha. My name is Mohammed. I'm the chef and owner of Saha Restaurant in San Francisco. Saha is really not just Yemeni's food, it's Arabic fusion. So it's food from a lot of places in the Middle East. So what I do, I just make it not as heavy, then overcook the vegetables, you get all the proteins, it's, it's a little lighter. Use a little spices, but not a lot. We have the halba, it's a Yemen's national dish, really beautiful dish, uh, it's very earthy, uh, it's a stew. Over there they only make them with lamb, but here we make them vegan, we make them with like really beautiful wild salmon, tuna and scallops. People taste it when you, when you do a dish from scratch, people really taste it, yeah. You order a chicken, we cook it from A to Z. My favorite dish is ravioli, shiitake mango ravioli. It's a vegan dish, just fresh mangoes, coconut milk, mint. It's really different and exotic and it's just, you can't get enough. I'm very serious about Saha. Um, to me, it's like coming to church or to the mosque because it's something I believe on. I've been cooking for 15 years and I really love it every day. You know, it's what I do, it's who I am. Yeah, it's food. 
Now, Suzanne, this is Yemeni cuisine, so Arabic, but but the uh, owner and chef Mohammed's from Yemen. What sort of difference does that make? Do you think? You know, I think when people think of Arabic food, they expect some traditional, almost middle, um, Mediterranean food, if you right. will. So they expect the hummus and the baba right. ganoush, and there's just so much more beyond that here. And there's things that I had never heard of, and so. Right. Lahem sugar and the kofta mm -hmm. and the, there's Fool, so which yeah. is sort of the, the soup absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. and yep. the wait staff there just really knows the menu in and out I feel like and it's it you just feel like you're kind of almost in someone's home and right. they're taking you through their home country and, and yet the time I was there we were new and I tried to play it off as the dummy and saying hey help me here yeah. and we caught him on a bad night because really? she oh, definitely yeah. caught us where didn't even steer us towards anything. But and now talk, let's talk about the food yeah. because um, what did you have that, I mean, were you happy once you got the food? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> After I got the food, it was like fantastic. Yeah. But right. uh, you know, first time there, you kind of want to say, okay, wait staff, help right. me here. It's a, a big menu too. It's a big menu. It's a totally so different experience. What did you have? Sorry. What did you, no, it's okay. I just want to know what you guys had well, to eat. We, uh, the, the helba and pita was mm -hmm. off the hook. That right. was phenomenal. The uh, salmon and helba is a very traditional yeah, Yemeni dish with okra. Yes. It's like a stew. I mean, it was the mm -hmm. stew. I, I reminded it me of goulash, and right. I was. It was. It was fantastic. The pita, fantastic. We had the salmon uh, baklava. Mm -hmm. Again, home run. Yeah. My right. friend was really skeptical when he heard salmon baklava. Yes. He's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. but that was his favorite dish of the night. He was yeah. blown away about how they could move this from a dessert to a really Absolutely. savory, yes. delicious. Yes. And the variety of vegetarian and vegan foods oh. there. So they have like th this white bean dish that has some truffle oil on it and some fried goat cheese, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing. You can so do a vegan kanafi. Uh, sort of yeah, we had that. Yeah. So very so crispy, good. Yeah. crispy, yummy. We also had their cauliflower and lavender soup. I saw that. Which I was, was so rich and fragrant yeah. and delicious. Just, we were sharing with a table of eight and I barely shared that. <laughs> yeah. My, my. Yeah. What do you get when you go? Because you've been there numerous yeah, times. Yeah, you know, the lahem sugar is my favorite. And mm -hmm. so it's a lamb dish over kind of a hummus and baba ganoush and it, it comes with harissa on the side, mm -hmm. which is very spicy. And right. so that's always fun. Um, we often do the North African couscous royale. And so that has merguez sausage in it and shrimp and also some fresh lamb in there as well. The merguez sausage is like amazing. Um, and then they're, they're desserts we love. They now they also do things though that do have a California twist like a ravioli mm -hmm. and uh, you know things that you Fried wouldn't avocado. traditionally think mm -hmm. of as, mm -hmm. as maybe Arabic or Yemeni. Absolutely. Cuisine. Yeah mm -hmm. and the small plates are just so great for sharing I find. They have a huge small plates menu yes. and then they have the entrees as well. So often we have a hard time finding our way to the entrees because the small plates. It, it but do you suggest it. asking? Did I mean? Did you ask? You know, where should we start? Should we start here? Should we then go to a? Right. Yeah. Try to. Right. But, uh, it really wasn't. Well, you didn't speak Yemeni. That's it, the problem. Very, 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 very <laughs> excellent point. <laughs> now tell me, because Saha actually means you know to your health, like okay. a votre mm -hmm. santé, a toast. So to, uh, Saha, Saha, right? Saha. Um, Saha. And, and Marmi, the owner's wife, um, she's the owner as well. It puts together the wine list. Did any of you have wine with that? Because this sort of cuisine lends itself very well to wine and they have a lovely list. Mm -hmm. Well I was going to contradict Ray about my service experience mm -hmm. because Jennifer who was our um, waiter was amazing. She, I said you know I've been drinking white for the small dishes, can you recommend a red for all these lamb dishes I'm about to have? And she was like, the petite Sahar, you're, I'm yeah. on it, and yeah. you're gonna love it, and yeah. I did. Don, yeah. in all honesty, when she came over to our table, things changed. Ah, mm -hmm. see? The first woman that came over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Jennifer, though. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Jennifer <laughs> came. Yeah. I love that. So, no, it, yeah. I definitely, after that, it definitely opened up. And they have yeah. quite a bit of wines by the glass, so you they can, do. Yeah. Yes, you know, we yeah. 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 Very, very nice. Good. Yeah. Very good. Absolutely. Very good. Mm -hmm. And what about, we mentioned a little bit about the vegan options, because that's very important to people today, vegan and gluten-free mm -hmm. options. And there's quite a bit there. Mohammed the chef is able to. Absolutely. And even a lot of their traditional dishes that are on there, while they may not be vegan to start, there's always like a vegan option. Let us mm -hmm. know if you need a vegan yeah. option and they're always just as good mm -hmm. as the traditional option so even if you're with friends who are vegan and you're right. like oh we have to order that vegan right. you don't mind because it's delicious it doesn't right. make a difference and so we a had a pride. soup with coconut milk in it instead mm -hmm. of milk delicious mm -hmm. okay now you can get to dessert because I know y'all had dessert right yeah. <laughs> the slap your mama slap like your mama. I don't know what to tell you about hey, that man, it's a slap little your mama. everybody slap your mama <laughs> right now slap oh. your mama it was good it's a pouch <laughs> of goodness right oh, it just like melts so describe 
describe it to me. I want to have it's a phyllo dough pouch, and it has gosh, what does it have in it? Chocolate, chocolate, a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything, like some marzipan. custard, marzipan, yeah. the marzipan, and yeah. it's just it's delicious. Right, right. it's really sure. phenomenal. Well worth it. All right, Suzanne, yeah. this is your spot. So give everyone a reason why they should go to. You Saha. know, I think Saha is a hidden gem. It's inside a hotel. It's in a neighborhood that maybe you're not in quite as often, yeah. and but the food and the atmosphere is just totally welcoming and authentic and delicious. And right. I think you should go. Yeah, I, I found it was uh, it, five of the six dishes we had fabulous. So I would definitely go back again. Yeah. Okay, and Dot? Well, my only disappointment was that I brought too many people. <laughs> and you <laughs> and wanted I, the food to yourself. I did. I could only take a bite here and there. <laughs> and I can't wait to go back with just my husband. Absolutely. <laughs> well, if you would like to try Saha, it's in the Hotel Carlton on Sutter between Hyde and Larkin in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-345-9547. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended. And the average tab per person without drink is around $40. So I want to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show. We featured Dot Adams recommending Lovejoy's Tea Room and the Queen's Tea, and Ray Scarabasio, whose place was Don Pico's Mexican Bistro and Cevicharia. And finally, Suzanne Henriksen introduced us to Saha, Yemeni cuisine with a twist. Don't forget that you can go to our website at kqed.org to add your comments on today's show. You'll find more details on all the restaurants featured, and you can watch or download a show. You can read my notes on the wines we're drinking today, and if you really want to stay in touch, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Drink up. This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by the members of KQED and by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria's 12 locations specialize in the delivery of authentic thin crust pizzas, pastas, and salads to Bay Area companies of all sizes. Professional staff deliver one order at a time, direct from their kitchens to your business. Whether it's for an important meeting, a thank you for employees, or a quick meal option, Amici's can provide freshly made food for groups from 2 to 2,000. Menu and locations can be found at Amici's.com. Amici's, proud to support KQED. IRG, with thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG Brisbane, Dublin, or online at marblecompany.com. Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. A KQED HD production.